Hello everyone, my name is Bob Beatty, and this short guide details the steps you'll need to follow when moving beyond a single node for your simulations. Here is a little information about myself, which you can pause and read further if you so wish. OK, let's start. Running a solver such as Snappy HexMesh, SimpleFoam or IcoFoam as examples, will by default use a single core in your processor. By using the open MPI command, MPI run, we can instruct the computer to issue multiple copies of the single task based on the line option NP. Here it is the value 4. This corresponds to four instances of the solver being started. When implementing MPI run, it is a worthwhile task to determine the number of instances which can be started that results in the best efficiency. This slide shows some pseudocode, whose task is to record the time taken to perform some calculation. The task is repeated for the number of available processor cores in the computer. What results from this may look like the graph on the right hand side. This is typical of my machine, a ProLiant DL380G6. As more processor cores are assigned to the calculation task, the time taken to complete reduces until a peak is reached. Any further addition of processor cores results in an increase in the calculation time. This is because the memory controller cannot satisfy all the cores being used. For my DL380, which has twin 6-core Intel Xeons, so giving 12 cores total, its efficiency peak is at 10 cores utilization. When adding the next node, keep the setup as simple as possible. Ensure the new machine has the same OS version, username and login details as the existing node and the same OpenFoam version. Choose an easy IP address method, either static address set by NetPlan on the machine itself or static address from your DHCP server. Use a gigabit switch to connect the two machines. The new node can be headless, that is, without a graphical user interface. In this case, the No Install Recommends option should be used when installing OpenFoam. This prevents ParaView and any unnecessary GUI components being installed onto the system. OpenMPI communicates via SSH. Each node therefore needs to be set up with passwordless login to each other. Create a set of keys on the first machine and copy them to the second machine. Then SSH into the second machine, create a set of keys and copy them to the first machine. SSH into the first machine to record the access. Exit back to machine number two and exit again back into machine number one. Choose a simple host name for each node. For example, node one is called foam one. Node 2 is called Foam 2. Set the Etsy hostname of the node to the appropriate name. It is also necessary to include the IP addresses and node names of all the nodes in the cluster to the Etsy hosts file as shown. Changes need to be made to the case file. In this example, we have set up two nodes, each with a quad core processor. The nodes are named Foam1 and Foam2. OpenMPI needs to be provided with a text file describing the number of cores each machine can provide. Each line of said text file should contain an entry for a node. Here, line 1 details the node named Foam1 has 4 slots and 4 maximum slots. Line 2 details Foam2 as also having four slots and four maximum slots. Adding the slots from both machines gives us our total of eight. It is here that one would enter the peak efficient number of cores from slide four as slots and max slots. The OpenMPI machines list text file can be a very complicated setup and is outside the scope of this guide. The machines list file, which I call machines, can be kept under the case system directory. The decompose pardict 
hierarchical for use after block mesh, can be updated with the new total processor core count at line number of subdomains. Once the block mesh output has been decomposed, a set of processor directories are created numbered 0 through to 7. 0 through to 3 will be utilised by node 1, and 4 through to 7 will be utilised by node 2. SCP is the choice to easily copy the directories to the other node. Note the script code shown copies the complete case over, which is fine for small cases. Once the data is copied over, we can execute MPI run with the line option NP8. In the example shown, MPI run will look into the machine's list file as specified by the option host file. It will determine that the eight instances being asked can be satisfied by the nodes specified in the machine's file, and how many instances are to run on each machine. Note, during the install of OpenFOAM, it is recommended the setup script be added to the end of bash RC. SSH logins are not interactive, so the script exits before the foam setup script is called. The setup script needs to be placed at the top of .bashrc before the shell interactive test. Once OpenMPI has completed the assigned task, the results for the remote node need to be copied back. We only need to copy the data the node has worked on. Here it is processor directories 4 through 7. Now we can use reconstruct par to build the result. I have made available an example case file which supports 40 cores over 4 nodes. You may download and examine the structure. Apologies for not using a bitly link. Note also the scripting is not the best. What follows next are a set of screen captures I took when adding an additional node to my existing 3 node cluster. In this first video, we're going to copy the existing SSH keys to the new node. Then we will log into the new node, create new keys on that machine, and copy those new keys to the existing nodes. Once done, we will check that we have passwordless logins between all the nodes and the new node. And then finally, we will set the Etsy hostname and Etsy hosts on the added node.
This next short clip shows the installation of a non-GUI OpenFoam from openfoam.org. It then shows the correct method to set up the bash rc script. We then call the OpenFoam setup script and check simple foam can be called. This next clip shows the necessary changes to my existing case file to go from 30 to 40 cores. It involves updating an environment variable called number prox in my par run shell script. Then I need to extend the make mesh, scotch decompose and parsim scripts. Create new hierarchical decompose file for 40 cores and create a new scotch decompose file for 40 cores. Finally, we need to update the system machines file to include the fourth node.